Hey sweetest potatoes, so today we are going to study about the control of plastomere identity. In that we'll be studying about conditional specification in C. elegans. So if you have not yet seen the previous video where we talked about the autonomous specification, I will link it in the description and you can check that out. And yeah, today's class will be talking all about conditional specification. So before actually going into the topic, so what does conditional mean? So conditional like in a normal English term, a verb, uh, which means that expressing an idea that one thing depends on another thing, right? So for example, if I have to give you like if I win a lot of money, then I could travel the world. So it's like an if and then question. It's conditional. If this happens, then that's going to happen. So the same thing kind of applies to uh, the C. elegans. Where if the presence of some proteins or some genes will, if, if only those genes are present, then the other genes will work. So the conditional specification is all about that. So without further ado, we'll go into the topic. So the control of plastomere identity, it is controlled by both the autonomous specification, which we have already discussed, and also the conditional specification. Now coming to this conditional specification. So this conditional specification, where is it seen? It is actually uh, seen in the development of endoderm cell lineage. And here I've just written it down in this way so that it's easier to explain. So during the fourth uh, cell stage, what happens uh, is that the EMS cell, like again, I would uh, request you guys to go back to the chart and then you know, look where this EMS and the P2 cells and everything comes. So during this fourth cell stage, the EMS cell is being activated. It, it gets a signal uh, from its neighboring cell, neighboring or the sister cell, which is the uh, P2 blastomere. So... So the, during the fourth cell division, the EMS cell gets a signal from uh, its neighboring cell, the P2 blastomia. So normally what happens is that this EMS cell, it will divide into two cells, that is the EMS and E, where the MS cell will become the mesodermal muscle and the E cell will become the intestinal endoderm. But uh, if, if, you, uh, if this P2 signal or the P2 sister cell, if it is removed, if the P2 cell is removed during the early fourth cell stage, then what happens is that the EMS will start producing two EMS cell instead of the MS and E. So uh, you see that uh, only uh, the MS cells will produce only the mesodermal muscle will be seen and there will be no endoderm. And then what they did is that they again uh, did some experiments where uh, they recombined the EMS cell with the P2 cell and they saw uh, the formation of the endoderm. And they also tried with the other cells. You also have this AP, APA, this ABA and ABP cells, right? So they tried to recombine this uh, with the ABA and ABP cell, but they found that nothing was formed. So it is very... so. From this, uh, we came to know that only if the EMS cell uh, is uh, gets a signal from its sister P2 cell, only then you get uh, it will get divided properly and you get both these cells. So it's like a it, this is referred to as conditional uh, specification. And this uh, specification, that is uh, the conditional specification in the MS cell, uh, it begins uh, with the maternal uh, gene, uh, the SK1 which we have already discussed in the autonomous uh, specification. So what this SK1 gene will do? So this SK1 gene, this, this is the SK, the SK1 gene, it will go and activate uh, the transcriptional factors that is MET1 and MET2 and it will, uh, and uh, the POP1. So the POP1 uh, signal, it will block the pathway to E. 
so e uh, it gives the endodermal uh, fate and uh, so thus it also uh, block the activity of the ms cell by blocking the activity uh, of the ms so uh, but and it, uh, this will go in turn uh, it will block the med1 and med2 gene and thus um, blocking like there will be failure uh, to activate a, a gene which is called as the uh, tbx35 so so pop1 acts like a regulator here so and then uh, throughout this animal kingdom uh, you have these uh, T TBX protein. Uh, they are known to be active in the mesoderm uh, formation. And the, when uh, I put the star just to show that uh, it is activated. So whenever this TBX35 is activated, uh, it will go uh, and activate the genes in the fanex, that is the mesodermal genes and the genes in the fanex muscles. That is, it will go and activate the uh, PHA4 as well as the H. Uh, H one edge in the C elegans and yeah uh, uh, like a complete you know how it is uh, how these genes are regulated uh, you can uh, go through in this chart where you can see the P POX going and blocking the MS and thus the uh, e endodermal fate will be blocked and then if this is blocked then the TBS won't get activated and then this won't be formed so you can just go through this chart once again so finally what happens is that uh, when this TBX35 is activated uh, then uh, it will go and uh, in turn activate these genes that is the PHF4 as well as the uh, muscles, muscle gene in the uh, C. elegans. And then uh, you have the P2 cell, uh, the P2 cell which is there. So you know uh, you have a sperm. Here you can see in your uh, right hand side, you can see the sperm. It will get divided. When the sperm and the egg come together uh, and they form a zygote and the zygote gets divided to form a um, anterior uh, p cell an anterior ab cell as well as the posterior uh, p cell, the founder cell as well as the, um, the stem cell lineage. Yeah, till here you know and now uh, what happens is that uh, this p1 will again get divided to produce the p2 cell and this uh, p2 cell it will produce a signal uh, which will uh, help it to bind to the ems uh, daughter cell to form the e cell okay and this uh, message is transmitted uh, through a signaling cascade which is called as the uh, vent signaling cascade and we'll be studying about that signaling cascade now so yeah, I have just written here for easier understanding. So what happens is that uh, the cell signaling during the fourth cell embryo, uh, the P2, uh, it will uh, it will signal uh, two proteins. Uh, that is the APX1, which is um, here. The APX1, which is a juxtacrine protein. You can just refresh what all these, you know, what juxtacrine and paracrine and all mean. And also the P2 will signal the MOM2 uh, protein which is a vent protein, paracrine protein. This in turn, it will go and bind to uh, this GLP-1 uh, notch protein on the ABP cell. Here you can see here, it will go and bind to the GLP-1 of the ABP cell. Whereas this MOM-5 here, the mom from MOM-2, the MOM-5 is formed. Uh, it is bound to MOM-5 protein, which is a fissile protein on the EMS cell. So remember, this is on AB and EMS. The same thing I've just written here. So the GLP is found on the ABP cell, whereas uh, the MOM2 will produce the MOM, uh, is bound to the MOM5 on the EMS cell. Here the ABX is bound to the GLP on the ABP cell. Now what happens? And what GLP stands for? A germline proliferation. So now uh, what happens is that now you know how they are uh, standing, right? How, how they are attached to each other and they are bound to each other on uh, different cells. So now uh, this, uh, the P2, it will produce um, 
MOM2 protein which is a C. elegans vent protein and this MOM2 protein it is received uh, by two other proteins that is the EMS by MOM5 here yeah. EMS by MOM5 protein and uh, this is a C. elegans version of vent receptor uh and uh and all these uh, like when these are bound together what it will it will result in a signaling cascade and this signaling cascade will go and down regulate the expression of a gene that is the pop1 gene in the ems daughter cell uh, which is destined to become the e cell it will go and down regulate so you know uh, here here also you can see so the ems cell it will usually uh, form uh, two cells it will get divided to e cell as well as the ms cell where the e cell will become the intestine and the ms cell will become the uh, muscle and the pharynx so uh, in some experiments they did where uh, if this pop so here it's only down regulated so if this pop one uh, transcription factor if this is deficient then what happens is that both the ems daughter cells will become e you will not have enms both will become e cell so thus uh, uh, this concludes uh, that the p2 cell uh, is very important to distinguish the abp from its sister aba so you know here here uh, just for a recap i even put this here you can see uh, the ab cell will divide into aba and abp and uh, th the attachment like how close the p2 should be attached to this ab cell so that will actually distinguish the fate of these two cells where you know uh, the aba uh, it is uh, it finally it results in the formation of neurons hypodermis as well as the anterior pharynx cells whereas this abp it will only form the neurons and the hypodermal cells there is no anterior pharynx so that is the uh, thing so how did it prove that so everything all these genes have been found the functions of all these genes and the position everything is found by mutational studies like you just mutate a gene and then see what happens so here also experimentally what they found is that if you reverse the position of these genes that is the aba and the abp then their fates are also reversed and the normal embryo is formed so from this in the sense you just take aba and put it in the position where abe is present like here you just change the position so here you can see uh, in this diagram the p2 is very close to this cell that is the abp and it is not that close to aba so just reverse the position and then you see even the fate is reversed so in the region where abp is uh, if aba is present then all the genes what the ab uh, bp was uh, supposed to produce like you can see in the previous um, so all these genes will be the abp will start producing all the things what the aba uh, produces so from this experiment what they concluded was uh, aba and abp are equ have equivalent cell fate and it is determined by the position of the embryo they also did some more experiments which is the transplantational studies which i have not written it here because it's little lazy <laughs> yeah so in transplantation studies uh, they uh, also uh, showed that the abp uh, become uh, it becomes different from the aba through the interaction with the p2 cell so only the ab only if uh, the abp here you can see the abp uh, if it is in contact with the p2 cell at the first cell uh, first cell stage then you can see um, uh yeah all this will happen so for example so just to test that what they did is again in the transplantational study they went and killed the cell they go and they went and killed yeah they went and go, uh, killed this p2 cell so when this p2 cell was killed in the four cell stage uh it was seen that this abp will not uh, generate uh, the co uh, the complementary cells and uh and it was also found that the contact see the p2 is very close to this abp right so the contact between uh, this abp and p2 is very important for the specification of the abp cell fates and they also found that you can also make this ab 
A cells. So you can make the A B A cells can be made into this one uh, if it is forced to contact with the uh, P two cell. So that is what they found. So the fate is determined by the position of the cell. And how how is this interaction brought about? Like how how these are kept together? It is because of the action of this protein that is the GLP protein. So GLP protein is kind of the protein which is like uh, you know which holds them together. And on the ABP cell, and uh, here uh, the interaction is made here uh, the interaction of this GLP protein again it is uh, mediated by. Uh, GLP on this ABP cell and it is mediated by another protein which is ABX1 on the uh, P2 cell. So ABX1 it stands for anterior uh, fan X axis. And what are these GLP proteins? They are a member of uh, conserved family of not proteins which serve as cell membrane receptors in cell cell interactions. And it is seen in, on both the AB and ABP, and it, it also has a very important ligand. It's one of the ligand for the not proteins like the GLP one cell surface receptor proteins, and uh, yeah. And after all this, uh, you can say that um, because of all the interactions and uh, things what are happening here, this uh, P two uh, will establish the um, dorsoventral axis of the. Uh, C elegans. P2 will establish the dorsoventral axis of C elegans. So yeah, so now we have completed with conditional specification. Now, how does the differentiation of fan X happen? So they say right. Differentiation literally means, you know, like dividing or something. But then here you have to remember uh, the differentiation of C elegans fan X is brought about by the integration of autonomous as well as con uh, conditional specification. This happens only in bio, right? <laughs> like in math, you cannot do this. Like differentiation is brought about by integration of two things. So yeah, to explain the generation of uh, the fan X uh, generation, I again. Yeah, use flowcharts. Yeah, so the FANX generation, uh, it is, the FANX is generated by two sets of cells. One group comes from the, both of them, the first group and the second group, it comes from the pharyngeal precursors. And this, uh, the first group of pharyngeal precursors, it comes from the EMS cell, which is dependent on the SK n1 gene which again if you remember it comes from the uh, autonomous uh, specification and this uh, pharyngeal precursor it comes from the aba blastomeres and it is dependent on the glp1 signaling and it comes from the emsl that is conditional specification so both of them what they'll do is this all these pharyngeal precursors they go and activate a gene called as the p PHA4 gene. So what is this PHA4 gene? So the PHA4 transcriptional factor, it will go and activate all the FANX specific genes and it appears that uh, this PHA4 transcriptional factor may take up maternal inputs and transform them into signal that transforms the zygotic genes which are required for the development of the uh, which are required for the development of this. That is the FANX is generated because of this gene, this transcriptional factor, that is the pH, uh, the gene which again, like lead to the transcriptional factor, P PHF4 transcriptional factor. So thus, this leads to the development of the pharynx. Yeah, so the same thing what I've explained is put into, uh, you know, text, which is from your text. <laughs> Yeah, so to summarize, so summary is really important and because, yeah, it's, I know, finally, and finally we complete this chapter. It's been very long and I hope it, it was worth it. And to conclude, uh, so in your textbook, they have even concentrated both on C. elegans as well as um, the nematodes as well as snails. So thank God you don't have to study about snails and it's just about C. elegans. 
and so yeah some of the points to remember like to summarize this is that so we started with all this gastrulation and all that right so the moments of gastrulation which include in invagulation involution and epiboli and you also know that there are three axes which are formed that is the anterior posterior axis head to tail or mouth to anus you have the dorsal ventral axis back to belly the right and left axis that is the two uh, lateral sides of the body and we studied how they are formed what genes are involved if you remember the par proteins and a lot of stuff there yeah and and in case of this nematodes so the uh, the cleavage is rotational and yeah you'll be thinking why do you have to study about c elegans yeah the thing uh, c elegans have uh, was chosen as a model organism because it has a uh, small number of cells it has a very small genome and it is easily bred and maintained it has a very short life span and can be genetically manipulated and it also has a cuticle uh, with which you can see the cell movements yeah that is the very reason they saw everything how the cells are moving and then you have to study a lot of genes so yeah this is why you have to study about all the c elegans and one more thing what we studied uh, during the c elegan development is that uh, during the early divisions you know that the c elegan zygote it will divide the daughter cell uh, it will divide and it becomes a founder cell and produces and produce many differentiated descendants you know it has the anterior founder cell the ab cell and uh, you have the posterior stem cell the p cell and the other become the stem cell uh, produces and many other founder cells as well as the germline cells are produced and finally the blastomere identity in c elegans is regulated by both the autonomous as well as the conditional specification with this we conclude and yeah i just put a diagram here uh, which kind of uh, just to remind you what are the transcriptional factors or the genes which you have to remember or you can just call them the players involved in both autonomous specification as well as conditional specification yeah this is what we are doing the whole quarantine <laughs> and if you guys like this video like if you have understood the class please click on the like it's like a dopamine dose for me and thank you so much for listening and consider subscribing for more awesome stuff so until next class stay, stay tuned thank you